as casual restaurants, they are everywhere. And they cover basically every major food category that you could ever want. I'm talking about your Moe's, Blaze Pizza, Panda Express, Chopped, Kava. Any time that I can step up to a literal buffet of ingredients and order exactly what I want and the quantities that I want them in, I'm gonna be a happy boy. And then of course, there's the king of them all, Chipotle. It's beloved, it's memed, it's hot sauce is gonna remind you later on the toilet of that meal that you had a few hours ago. Over the last few years, Chipotle's been one of the fastest growing chains in America. From their fresh ingredients, quick service and delicious taste, it's not hard to see why people keep demanding more and more of their food. Which is why I'm here today, loyal theorists. These types of restaurants are my favorite, and I want to make sure that I'm able to get the most bang for my buck. So, how do you get the most out of your Chipotle burrito order? The internet's devised a whole host of tricks, secrets, and life hacks, but you know what? I'm not talking about those. This isn't about ordering everything in separate cups or getting a bunch of extra orders aside. No, what I'm focused on today are the psychological strategies that can get more beans in that burrito. Do male workers pile on more pinto than females? Should you be ordering fast or slow for that barbacoa on the goa? How does a lunch rush affect the stock of guac? And do nice guys finish first, or does being sour get you a bit more sour cream? Hope you're hungry, my friends, because this episode is ready to burrito bowl you over. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show with no freezers, microwaves, or growth hormones added. You know it, you love it, you go to it when you want to live moss and don't want to deal with the after effects of Taco Bell. It's Chipotle! But really, today's about all the different fast casual restaurants that have you going down a line to order, be it poke or pizza. I've been waiting a long time for this episode. A long time! Even before Food Theory existed, when I would talk to people about what this channel was going to be doing, this was the episode that I would point to as an example. How do you psychologically hack your way to getting more food at a fast casual restaurant. And you know what? People immediately got it. Because I think we've all been there, right? We've all noticed how ordering one item at a time tends to get you a bigger scoop than just rushing through your list of pre-planned ingredients. We've witnessed how the workers struggle to portion out tacos, how the lunch rush makes it a flurry of activity where scoop sizes go out the window. And personally, I've seen time and time again how Steph, as a petite female, tends to get like half the food that I do. Especially when you're talking about things like poke places. It's a weird trend. And while we've all had some form of anecdotal evidence to this, I wanted to prove it once and for all using science. Why wait this long to do it? Well, an episode like this has always been a bit out of budget for us, and try as I might, I didn't really know anyone who could get me access to the prized Chipotle celebrity card. Yeah, in case you weren't aware of this one, this thing gets you free Chipotle for a full year. It was like my white whale to get on this channel, but you know what? Never worked out. And now, seeing as how this is my penultimate episode, I just kind of had to bite the bullet. We're going to be doing this one with or without the card. Clearly, we went without. That said, if someone from Chipotle just so happens to see this and feels compelled to send one my way to Matt Pat the Chipotle superfan, it's never too late. I'm still gonna be making stuff. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Seriously, please give me the card. So what are we actually testing today and how are we gonna be doing it? Well, the plan is simple. Steph and I, as well as HR manager Rachel and production manager Justin are gonna be heading to Chipotle for lunch for four days straight. Each time we're gonna be going to a different restaurant to ensure that we don't become regulars and get some form of special treatment. Each day of the test, we're gonna be ordering the exact same set of ingredients. A burrito bowl with white rice, black beans, pico, cheese, sour cream, fajita veggies, guacamole, and a variable protein based on the day. That way we can see how the different proteins affect our final totals. Why this list specifically? Well, it turns out not all ingredients on the Chipotle menu are treated the same. Some end up costing the company significantly more than others. As a result, Chipotle trains their employees to be extra careful of portion sizes with these couple of ingredients. In fact, according to conversations that we found between restaurant managers online, at the end of every shift, managers are required to tell the company exactly how much of these ingredients they use, so that data can be cross-referenced with how much they sold, all to ensure that they don't end up costing the company a lot of extra money. These ingredients even have themselves a special name, the Critical 7. These seven are steak, carnitas, barbacoa, chicken, so basically all your proteins, cheese, sour cream, and then of course, guacamole. So our standard order is trying to make sure that we've hit each of those. By the way, this isn't one of the hacks that we're testing today, but if you order a burrito without meat, apparently the guac is free. Just a little something for all our vegetarian friends out there who thought they wouldn't get any anything out of this episode. Each day we're gonna be looking to test one of four different variables. Speed of ordering, friendliness, type of order, and crowdedness. Across those 16 bowls, we're also gonna be paying attention to any differences in what the girls get versus what the guys get, as well as the impact that server age and gender might plan the amount of food that we're getting at the end of the line. You know, are guys giving out more hefty scoops than women? From there, we'll precisely weigh out our meals to see if any of these wound up as an actual hack or just totally whack. And uh, by the way, make sure that you leave your ordering stories down in the comments below because after seeing the results, I guarantee 
guarantee that there's gonna be a part two to this episode and we're gonna be looking for more variables to try. And so with all of that out of the way, it's time to fill our bowls and our bellies. Round number one, speed of ordering. For day one, the plan was to test how to order your toppings. Normally, when you order a bowl at Chipotle, the process is broken down into two steps. First, you tell the worker what you want and tell them your protein, rice, and beans. And then you're usually passed off to a second employee who handles the rest of the toppings. Most people, when they order toppings, they simply just list them all out at once. Can you get pico cheese, sour cream, fajita veggies, and guac? But is it possible to get more if you order your toppings one at a time? The logic here being that by asking for them all at once, the server's already thinking about how much needs to go into that bowl and how to fit it all in there. However, if you're doing the ingredients one at a time, the employee is gonna give you a healthy portion, not realizing that you plan on ordering more toppings. Kinda like a cheesy guac jump scare. Another explanation could just be them rushing through the list of ingredients so they don't forget any of the items. In short, the underlying logic is that you're setting the pace for how your order's delivered. However, there is another side to this argument. Once they realize that they might have given you too much too early of those first couple of ingredients, they might just ease up on all the rest. This is one that people like to actively call out on social media. And they're like, what do you want? And I'm like, uh, spinach. And then they just destroy it with spinach. <laughs> and you're like, I want like five other things. And then you're like, onion. And they're like, okay. And they put like two onions on it. And it's like, more onion, please. <laughs> so after day one, what did the data tell us? Well, when ordering all the ingredients at once, Justin's barbacoa bowl ended up weighing in at a massive 799.5 grams. That is over 1.75 pounds of pure burrito-y goodness. Steph ended up with even more than that, 810.4 grams. As for Rachel and I doing the slower ordering tag, Rachel ended up getting the least amount of toppings out of all of us, just 797.1 grams, two less than Justin. As for me, well, I ended up being the king of the burritos, tipping the scales at a whopping 896 grams, almost a full two pounds of burrito. So does that mean my slower ordering method worked? No, actually, clearly not. Well, sure, I ended up getting the most burrito in my bowl out of all of us. Rachel, who ordered the exact same way as me, ended up getting the least, especially when you compare it to Justin, who ordered right after her. Even though Rachel's hack was supposed to have gotten her more toppings, the difference between the two of them was practically nothing. If anything, my results show that it pays to be at the end of a meat cycle. You see, when I pulled up to the counter to get my barbacoa, the tray of beef was nearly at the end. So instead of just giving me a standard scoop of meat, my employee scraped the remaining dregs out of the container in order to put in a fresh new tray. That ultimately resulted in me practically getting meat and a half for free. I'm not gonna complain about that for my belly, but I will complain about it for scientific rigor. Day two's test was less about psychology and more about strategy. Basically, we tested whether tacos get more food than other orders because the employees struggle to portion them out. You see, at Chipotle, all entrees cost the exact same price based solely on the protein that you want to add. So the question is, which ordering method is going to get you the most? Having one general scoop made for the burrito bowl or having them take three smaller individual portions trying to fit them into those crunchy taco shells? I don't know about you, but when I order the crunchy tacos, people tend to get flustered by the meat clumping up and having to shake out the small amounts to fit in the shells. So it just becomes a free-for-all of ingredients getting dumped in there left, right, and center. So with everything priced the same and with all the same ingredients, was everything also the same weight? Absolutely not. I had a sneaking suspicion going into this that the tacos, by the very nature of their size, were gonna result in less than our burrito bowl. But I did not expect how big of a difference it was gonna be. On average, the burrito bowls weighed a full 263 grams more than those hard shell tacos. That is over a half a pound of food difference for something that's costing you the exact same amount. By simply ordering the three tacos, you're basically basically getting a full 50% less food for the exact same cost. This myth is absolutely confirmed. Do not ever buy the hard shell tacos from Chipotle ever again. You know what else you should never buy? Beauty products infused with caffeine. You see, over on Style Theory, Amy and I did a food experiment of our own, where me and the other members of Team Theorist detoxed from caffeine in order to see if caffeinated beauty products actually do anything for you. Spoiler alert, they don't. But click the link to watch me suffer through my Diet Coke withdrawals anyway, and in the process celebrate Style Theory's one year birthday. Birthday, after you're done watching this episode, of course. Now then, moving on to day number three. On day three, we were back to the psychological hacks. You know the expression, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar? Well, we were putting that one to the test. Essentially, we were trying to see if being nice to people leads them to subconsciously give you more food. Makes sense. If you're perceived as friendly, the employee may fill up that spoonful of guac ever so slightly more. I mean, food service jobs, heck, any service job for that matter, can really be thankless as you deal with mean and pushy people. So by being friendly, the goal is to brighten their day a bit, which, let's be honest, is something that we should probably be doing regardless of expecting to get anything out of it. But who 
knows? You might also walk away with a bigger meal. So to test this one out, Rachel and I made eye contact. We said please and thank you. We put on a smile. We asked how everyone's day was going. Meanwhile, Justin and Steph had to put on their best acting skills by behaving more asocial. Not rude or hostile or anything like that. They didn't go full on Karen mode, but they gave shorter responses. They looked down at their phone. They didn't say please or thank you until after they were fully checked out. And the results were shocking. I'm kind of afraid to tell you this, but not only did Rachel and my friendliness not reward us with more food, it actually backfired. Being asocial actually resulted in a bowl that was on average 100 grams heavier than our friendly bowls. That is almost three and a half ounces, nearly a quarter pound of food difference. If you're looking at the data, you'll notice that my bowl in particular is especially light. That's because as we were talking, the server forgot to add pico to the bowl. Since I was supposed to be nice, I felt bad correcting them, so I ended up with an incomplete order. But even without that anomaly, Rachel's bowl was still a solid 50 grams lighter than either of our asocial options. And I think that right there shows us why this big difference exists. By trying to engage with the customer while also doing their job, you take the server's focus off of their work. You are breaking up their rhythm. Now, let me be perfectly clear. This isn't me saying to go out into the world and treat everyone like garbage to get more food. Far from it. I'm just reporting the numbers that we got and how we might have gotten them. And like I said, this day was probably the most socially uncomfortable for all of us because we're a team full of friendly, polite people pleasers. That's why I'd actually love to hear from anyone in the food service industry. Let us know down in the comments your perspective on all this. Do you like it when people talk to you? Is simply being polite enough? Or would you prefer that we just leave you alone? Would you like to just keep your head down and get through the shift? Because at the end of the day, I want to help you. Which brings us then to the last day of our experiment. So far with this episode, we've tested what we order and how we order. Now we're going to test out when we order. Does going to a fast casual restaurant when it's less busy get you a fuller bowl? Now, to ensure that the workers weren't changing over, we decided to create our own pseudo lunch rush. This time, Steph and I went by ourselves when we knew that Chipotle wasn't going to be busy. Once we had completed our order, Rachel and Justin came rolling in deep with the entire rest of Team Theorist. And it just so happened to pile on from there with an extra lunch rush. The line in its entirety wound up being about 20 people deep with Rachel and Justin smack dab in the middle of them all. And so what ended up happening there? Surprisingly, not much. On average, Steph and my solitary service led to an average of 851.4 grams, while Rachel and Justin's bum rush on the counter got an average of 834.95 grams. A difference of just 16 grams, about half an ounce. That could honestly be the difference of just a few extra pieces of steak. Especially when you look at the spread across the four bowls, there really seemed to be no correlation between how busy the restaurant was and how busy our bowls were getting. So kudos to the Chipotle team on keeping their cool while being super busy. Myth busted. But those weren't the only variables that we were looking for. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, besides the four experiments that we carried out, we were also looking at a meta-analysis across all the days to see how meat, gender, and server affected our results. First off, the winning meat, surprising everyone, was steak. When you eliminate any variable conditions, we found that of all the meats, steak actually gave us the heaviest burrito bowls, bar none, followed closely by barbacoa, then chicken in a distant third, and in dead last, carnitas. My hypothesis here is that, unlike barbacoa, where the meat tends to clump and stick together, and most of it's buried under those murky, meaty juices, the carnitas is dry. And so when it's pulled up by the tongs, it's easier to see what you're grabbing, and it's easier to separate out smaller portions of it. Meanwhile, steak and chicken, they're fairly well standardized because they're being scooped by a big old spoon. As for the effects of gender on the amount of food that you're getting, we determined that Chipotle is not sexist. <laughs> When we averaged all the burrito bowls together, the averages came out to be almost identical. While Justin and I did get slightly more food on average, it was only about 8 grams. That's the equivalent of 8 paper clips. So good on you, Chipotle, for meeting the absolute bare minimum of human decency. Now, I gotta be honest, I was surprised by this. Anecdotally, I've seen for years that Steph tends to get less food than me in other fast casual restaurants, especially when it comes to poke restaurants. That's why one day, some updated version of this episode is gonna happen again. You hear me on that, Santi? Loud and clear, Matt. And let's not wait six years for it this time, all right? That said, where I often see that difference happening is with smaller franchises or more homespun local establishments rather than the massive mega chains. I honestly think the results that we had over the last week come down to how well run Chipotle is as a business and how well it trains its employees. As a huge company, Chipotle ain't in the business of losing money, and they accomplish that via two methods, standardization and accountability. According to Chipotle, the appropriate servings for each item are four ounces of protein and rice, two ounces for salsa, one ounce for cheese and lettuce. And that is how employees at every single Chipotle are trained in what they call the, quote, art of portioning. As Chris Arnold, the communications director for Chipotle, once told ABC News, their menu prices are based on food costs, and the critical seven are ingredients that are much more expensive. Employees have more latitude with ingredients like rice and beans and salsa, but they try to be more mindful of serving sizes with the more costly ingredients. As we talked about earlier, Chipotle managers have to keep track of how much of the critical seven ingredients they use on a daily basis. Therefore, they're responsible for making sure that their employees keep to the prescribed standards and minimize waste as much as possible. So even if an employee would love to succumb to your hacks and give you
you more food, it's not really up to them. And on top of everything else, Chipotle also hires people known as restaurateurs, whose job it is to go to different stores in the company-issued Toyota Prius to further solidify that every scoop is as consistent as the last. Basically, everything is done in the name of making sure that the burrito you order in Hollywood, Maryland contains the exact same ingredients as the ones that you order in Hollywood, California. So despite our best efforts to try and game the system into the ultimate burrito, what we really learned was this. Never order a taco, be polite, but not overly polite, order quickly, and stick with barbacoa or steak. Anything beyond that, though, is a busted myth. It turns out that despite our best efforts to hack Chipotle, it was Chipotle who hacked us. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> And hey, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to go check out our pizza topping video from a while back. You'll be shocked by what happens when you add more toppings to your pizza. Or hey, if you want more optimization, check out our video about never ordering medium fries at McDonald's. That one's over on the right. And for one final time, my friends, I say to you, I will see you all next week.